Well, you think of writers as liberal, but clearly there's a shortage of writers on the left these days. Maybe they all went into private equity or something. How do we know that there aren't enough writers? Because Democratic lawmakers use the same talking points on virtually every issue. Mindlessly repetitive, they can almost always get their friends in the press to use them, however. You'll notice that on every story. The disaster at the U.S.-Mexico border was, remember this, a manufactured crisis? The Mueller report, meanwhile, was damning, they told you, until they forgot it existed. And now there's the Ukraine story. The Trump administration says it will not cooperate with an impeachment investigation until the House votes to begin one. So what does that mean? Well, everyone at CNN agrees the president is stonewalling. The Trump administration announcing a total stonewall strategy to openly defy Congress and its constitutionally granted power to investigate the president. So uh, the president can stonewall, but it's not going to change the outcome. House Democrats warn White House stonewalling won't make their inquiry go away. The more they try to stonewall and, and, and obstruct the investigation, the deeper they'll get into the quicksand. Doubling down on its strategy, and that strategy is to stonewall. That strategy is to obstruct. I don't think that their stonewalling will hold up. When the White House stonewalls, uh, they commit a grievous error. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. There's nothing the media won't repeat, nodding mindlessly. Well, here's another thing CNN Democrats and the rest of Washington agree on. The Ukraine whistleblower is a hero, a brave hero, doing a vital service to this country. He's a whistleblower. The funny thing is, and if you live in Washington, you know this, we have whistleblowers here, and they're almost always ignored and mistreated by the people in power. All the cool kids look down on real whistleblowers. It's amazing. Most of them you don't even know exist. You never hear their names. One exception to the rule is John Kirikou, who is a CIA whistleblower. He blew the whistle on the agency's covert torture programs and was profoundly punished for it. So we thought we'd have him on tonight to assess this new whistleblower. John, thanks so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks. Uh, for how do you assess this whistleblower, who everyone I, loves? I don't think this is a whistleblower. Not oh. at all. I think this is an anonymous source for the, uh, the Democratic uh, staff in the House of Representatives. So that sounds very different from a whistleblower. What is a whistleblower? How yes. is a whistleblower distinct from whoever this person is? A whistleblower is someone who brings to light any evidence of waste, fraud, abuse, illegality, or threats to the public health or public safety. And they do this almost always uh, with, a, with a great personal cost attached yes. to it. Now, this, this so-called whistleblower at the CIA is someone who is acting anonymously. And remember, this person is not an undercover CIA operative. By all accounts, this is an analyst who is not undercover. Well, you can't hide this person's uh, uh, name, right. identity, just to save him from embarrassment or, or trouble of being recognized or something like that. It's just not appropriate. If this is a whistleblower, he needs to come forward in public, testify in open session, and blow that whistle. What's interesting is that he comes out and makes these allegations, and then the White House immediately releases the transcript. Right. So it's kind of end of story. In your case, you made allegations that were true, it turned out. Yes. And you still went to prison for saying it out loud. I did. I went to prison for 23 months. And, and you know, the same people that, that attacked me are attacking the president. Uh, Robert Mueller set up the John Kiriakou task force at the FBI. John Brennan uh, petitioned Attorney General Holder to charge me with five felonies, including three counts of espionage, all of which were dismissed. And uh, ironically, it was Peter Strzok who put the cuffs on me in 2012. Wait a second. So you told, you told the truth about what a federal agency was doing without the knowledge or, or consent of Congress. So That's right. Outside the Democratic channels. Yes. Right? Uh, undermining democracy, they would say now. And MSNBC and CNN did not come to your defense. Actually, only Fox came to my defense. You know, that's something you and I have never talked about. Uh, but MSNBC, I didn't even know this. Yeah, MSNBC never called me a whistleblower. They called me CIA leaker John Kiriakou. And then CNN, after a year pending trial, going through the whole case, after a year they decided to call me a whistleblower. It, it's tough being a whistleblower. You know, political lines are drawn. And that's really where these things usually turn. We're seeing the Democrats trying to do the same thing right now with this CIA officer. They're telling us 
They're imposing upon us their notion that this person is a whistleblower, and he simply is not. I don't think there's any chance this person is going to do almost two years in prison. <laughs> Not a chance. You know, even his attorney, uh, Mark Zaid, is one of these CIA insiders. He's attached at the hip with the CIA. He's represented dozens of CIA people. He has a CIA security clearance. If, if you are represented by Mark Zaid and you're claiming to be a, a whistleblower, you are not. You're one of the only people I can think of who could give us this perspective on the whistleblower story. And I really am grateful that you It's came. my pleasure. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, John.